Good afternoon, everybody. Today is December 27th, 2021. I'm Rahim Eskalai here with episode 226 of 413 Sports Talk. Sitting to my right is the Side Tech Cybercats head coach of the basketball program, Shaka Rivera. Sitting to my left is Coach Dion Bird of the Bay State Bulls. They, they are here with me today. Um, we're going to sit and pick their brains on everything basketball. Um, we're even going to talk about a couple other sports as well. Um, and they're going to help us do the episode. So without further ado, let's get into it, talk about um, some things in the news that, that I uh, felt should be brought up. Um, the depleted Bucks team wins the NFC South since the first time since, what was that? 2007? Who cares? Who cares? Oh, this guy, this guy. Yeah, honestly, who cares about the Bucks? Man? Um, I don't understand. So what, did the Saints win the, the division the year that they went to the Super Bowl? Yeah, they were the wild card. So the Bucks were the wild card. Oh, okay. So they yeah. won the Super Bowl, the wild card. Something the Cowboys have not yet. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is right, this is right. <laughs> uh, Rams secure a playoff spot with a win versus the Vikings. They won 30-23. to 23. Kind of figured that was going to happen. The Vikings are about as inconsistent as anything on this planet, so kind of didn't figure out them figure uh, them to win. Um, moving to the NBA, Lonzo Ball and three others. What happened to them, guys? What's what's been the constant story? COVID protocol. Yes, yes, yes. And 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 that's that's honestly it's killing the NBA. I don't understand why Silver hasn't hasn't. You know what I mean? Pause the games or whatever. Billionaires lost too much money a year ago. You think billionaires want to lose more money? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> they're dealing with money and right. they repair it. So right. Huge difference, right? <laughs> billionaires lost a ton of money. What do you lose? A couple of million every game that you don't play? Okay. That's something, that's something like, like that. my money? Um, we're going to make these games go. Let's we're not stopping this no more. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. 10-day contracts work. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. For, uh, it's less than a million. Best well, what's his face? Um, Dolphins, Saints tonight. Who you guys got and why? Saints. Saints. Ian Book is a graduate from the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, which is one of my favorite college football teams. So yes. I'm going Saints 150%, um, besides the fact that my brother's a Dolphins fan. That I'm so. <laughs> Coach Burt? Who cares? Cares? <laughs> this Cowboys fan right here. He doesn't, he doesn't give a damn about the NFC. Oh, man. Um, and that's the stories for the news. Let's move on to scores from yesterday's NFL action. Just bypass everyone's scores. Go right to the Cowboy game. And we get, let, let's get to the interview part. All right, all right. <laughs> I got you. Dallas Cowboys 56, Washington football team 14. That's what they get for bringing them dumbass hot seats out there. <laughs> First of all, the Redskins are depleted. The Cowboys I, I don't, for the I first don't, time. I don't want to hear it's actually playing Bro, well. Right. I don't want to hear it. The Cowboy team and depleted all last year. No as one usual, anything. as usual, when Cowboy fans start to win, right, no, right, 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 goes out the door. <laughs> first of all, until they're reminded of Tony Romo on the first <laughs> round. Yes. Wait, no, 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 first of all, you know me better than that. But you know me better than that. I'm, and that I, wasn't a catch either, I, by the way. I, I, I would tell you quick. They suck, but they suck, right? But you can't tell me. I don't want to hear anything about anyone being depleted. The Cowboys were depleted all last year, and everyone said the same thing. Next man up. Next man up, damn it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So, San Fran hasn't won one in a while either. Uh, but I'm not. if I'm not mistaken, theirs were more current than the Who, Cowboys. When the last time they won one? Uh, I want to say 96 when Deion Sanders was the cornerback. So the Cowboys won one in 97. So oh, no, it was 95. I, I, I can't the remember. The Cowboys won it last. They, oh. no, I think the Niners won it last. No, but then, the, the, then Dion went to Dallas, and you guys didn't win it. Again. Yes, we did. No way. Yes, they did. No I, way. I bet you, I bet you Casey Mountain do. <laughs> oh, let's go. Run. Let's go. Dion went, Dion went to the Cowboys right after that year, and they beat Pittsburgh that year in, in the Super Bowl. Let's see. Latest Cowboys Super Bowl victory. 97. Damn, I was young. Shut up. <laughs> right. Some of us wasn't even born back then. <laughs> Serious? All right. Let's see it. Let's see it. 97. Oh, January 28th, 96. Thank they, you. They beat the Steelers. Oh, so, 97. so 97 was San Diego. Yeah. No, 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 no. Niners. No. 
Dion or was it 95? 95. 95. 95. 95. Because y'all, y'all stole one of our players. Uh-huh. It is what it is. Latest, oh, we stole the latest Niners. When's the last time you guys have made it out of the first round? The only thing that matters is who got the ring. Neither one of us got a ring. That's not true. That's not, that is 1,000% true. If you don't win, then you, then you America's a team needs to win every year. Nope. And they let America, America does win every year. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? That's a whole other subject. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, wow. Right. Damn, the Niners lost to the Chiefs. Yes, they did in the Super Bowl. So we were the, last, the latest team oh, to go to the Super Bowl. <clears throat> I asked, did they win? No, we did not. We lost because our quarterback couldn't complete a pass. Did they win? <laughs> the question was, did they win? We are dealing. So when the last time, when the last time had San Fran won? San like Fran won the Super Bowl. Um, Ninety-five. Yeah, I think yeah the year before the, the Terrell Owens or did they draft? Yeah, they didn't Owens win that year. Before? No, it was Ricky Waters. Um, they didn't win. Jerry Rice. Yeah. Was, was on that team the last time they won. Steve Young was the quarterback. Ninety-five. And Junior Seau, God rest him. You know. Rest in peace was the middle linebacker for yes. San Diego Chargers. 95. Yes, rest in peace to Junior Seau. Uh, Come on, sports guy. You should have this coming in right in your head. What's that? The last time they won was 95. Yeah, I was going to say they 95 or 94. I don't know why it's. So, so who won one last? Whoo. I mean, honestly, the Packers in 2010. Who cares, yep. who cares about that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Aaron Rodgers, no, Aaron Rodgers no one, no one sliced up the Steelers yeah, secondary. No one told him to put himself into the conversation. <laughs> You're supposed to be. be, be, the, be. Wasn't it? It was Colin Kaepernick who got his opportunity in the playoffs Ooh. against the Packers. Ooh. 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 Yards, but I'll, I'll, I'll get that <laughs> all, all you got to do is you, yeah, you, kill you, you be the ugly Molly Q yep. and, 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 just, and, and make sure we stay on target. And, and you and you keep them nasty ass Packers out of here. I know it's nasty ass Packers because we definitely are gonna make it to the Super Bowl this year. You heard it first. Definitely. Y'all heard it first. We're, we are. We're gonna represent the NFC. So yeah, Cowboys fifty six, uh, Washington Football Team fourteen. I do feel like an idiot now as my uh, my wallet's a little depleted. As <laughs> as that, that uh, he called me last night. Well, I'm I'm betting. I'm betting. This, this, this Washington team that wins tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was uh, yeah. definitely, definitely brutal. But, yeah, Dallas over the football team. Um, Chiefs over the Steelers, 36-10. I think, I think it's safe to say that the Chiefs are back. Um, Texans beat the Chargers, and no one gives a damn about that game. Uh, Tampa Bay beat Carolina, 32-6. But what was, what was Tom Brady so – what was he bugging about at the end of that game? Probably for what happened to Saints because because he can game before right it's not Brady he can he can he can wall out on the sidelines yeah and and there is no criticism <coughs> from doing that whatsoever <laughs> so it's fine he, he's he's he's, he, he's earned the right to the, the, the wall out it's so he's earned the he's earned the right to act on the ass no question <laughs> Tom Brady well let me tell you something that Saints game those Saints games are the reason why he's not going to win MVP this year you know that you correct. Uh, I think Jonathan Taylor should join the MVP. Ooh. I think Jonathan Taylor should. Is, I think it's him. I, mean, I think it's Jonathan Taylor, or if not, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is up and he's doing great, but I mean, Jonathan Taylor can be special. Yeah. No yeah. Problem. Yeah. It's yeah. Not, yeah. Not often you come around a talent like that at that position and that young man's special. Mm-hmm. Sure. Most definitely. Most definitely. Uh, Bills over the Patriots, thirty-three twenty-one. You know, <laughs> I always love when the Patriots lose. So, <clears throat> excuse me. No. Um, no qualms there. Jets beat the Jaguars 26-21. Another meaningless game. Um, oh, last game I was really surprised about was Joey uh, Joey B and the Cincinnati Bengals. What a surprise. Uh, I didn't think they were going to beat up Baltimore like that. I, yeah, they don't have they, Lamar. Lamar you talk, was said, you talk about being depleted? That's, <laughs> that's depleted. Like Baltimore has nothing left. I mean, I think... When you don't have a quarterback, it's as similar as not having a point guard in basketball. You Pretty don't much. have the quarterback of your team, and you don't have a, a point guard. You don't have a complete. You don't have. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, that wasn't even their second string. That was a quarterback who they picked up. Oh, Hundley. Hundley. Off yeah. the practice squad, right? Uh, I don't think Hundley even played yesterday. I thought it was somebody else. No, it was Hundley. Well, I tell you how much I didn't watch. It. Yeah, but uh, that's a um. It's not let. That's not a. Huntley that backed up Aaron Rodgers. That's a different one. Yeah. yeah. No, actually, it might be 
Same one. Hundred. I do the same one. I did not know. Shit, man. So those players. <laughs> he don't know who's on his team. Well, Ronaldo. Well, well, Rogers. Well, <laughs> well, Aaron Rodgers. I know Aaron. Discount. Double check. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, when it was, I think it was Brett Huntley. Brett Huntley um, backed up Aaron. I, I think mean, this. The regardless who they are, they both are no good. So, <laughs> I don't know. Let's, let's move on. I don't know. What's Green Bay known for? <laughs> Jeez. Uh, that's it. Tap it over. <laughs> Those are the scores for the NFL. Um, uh, I think tonight, I think Miami's going to win that one, I think honestly. So. I think the Saints are, Saints kind of like remind me of the Minnesota Vikings. Like when I see them play, they just seem confused. They, they, they don't know how to win. Um, and it's, it's, it's really, it's really not entertaining watching them on TV. Um, now let's move on to the coach's corner. We're going to sit here and talk to these two, these two um, individuals about basketball. Uh, first, I'm going to start off with you, Coach Bird. Um, your Bay State Bulls are 3-1 this season, undefeated on the road, Road Warriors, just like those uh, New York Giants who beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Um, Bay State Bulls sit atop the Bi-County Bi East Division uh, 5, along with Hoosick Valley, who's 3-1. And a sliding Palmer team who's one and four, uh, who haven't won since beating East Hampton on the 20th of December, 71-59. And in a bi-county East group that only boasts the War Corner Warriors as another team with a winning record that could be a threat. Um, this is pretty much the Bay State Bulls Division Two win. Um, Coach Bird, how do you feel about the uh, COVID pause as far as? Um, all winter sports stopping until after the new year, and um, how how has it affected uh, you and and your players and stuff like that? Uh, this is a this is a loaded question. <laughs> uh, I will say this: I think that I think it's scary times for coaches and, and players. I, I until I know there's a lot of things going around about different surveys and things like that, but until until you have to come and go into a locker room and, and deal with the kids when the kids are getting tested positive at, at a rapid rate, you know, as coaches, my coaching staff, for example, we're not, we're all not spring chickens no more. So, one of us gets sick, it could be, it could be tough. Right. Um, I do think that the pause on some levels was necessary, but, uh, but maybe not as well. It's hard to pause one area when everybody around you is still playing. Boom. Um, Boom. So how do you justify saying, well, Holyoke, Chicopee, East Long, East Long Meadow, Long Meadow all could play, but Springfield, you can't. Um, but my team, for example, we're not really under the Springfield Public Schools umbrella. Um, so we, we didn't have games during the Christmas break anyway. So, so we're off for a little bit. It's just tough. I mean, I get it. I get it. How people say kids need to play, kids need to get opportunities. But I think one of the biggest jobs, and I think Coach Rivera will agree with me, one of the biggest jobs that we have as a coach is forget basketball. Right, forget right. basketball. One of the biggest jobs we have is to help keep our kids safe. And I would, I would support a shutdown if, if need to. If they're going to tell me this doesn't help my kids be safe, mm -hmm. then I have to support that. Most definitely. Um, Coach Rivera, how do you feel about that? <laughs> Interesting. I happen to be one of the schools that has been shut down completely. Mm -hmm. um, there's several little ways you look at this. Um, from from a coach's standpoint, it, it, it's difficult. It's tough. Um, we know basketball is, is an outlet for young men and women around the country to, to allow them to express themselves. And, and, and get through some things that they're battling outside with mental health and things of that nature. Um, so taking that away um, ultimately can you know do more damage um, mental health wise to to this you know to the individuals we come across. Um, as a basketball coach, I think we prepare and put all this time and all this energy in and, and this effort to get our teams to where they need to be and to have a complete stop. Uh, for over the vacation, I think, was an injustice to 
to the coaching staff itself and to the players because if there is a resume to play, um, now you're telling us to go compete against teams who have been playing for a month, right. um, continuously practicing while we're uh, waiting to get a, okay, it's, it's okay to play. And, and we understand the times that we are in right now. Um, COVID is a very serious, um, very serious thing. You know, this pandemic's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Right. Um, right. All you can do is, is, is put rules and, 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 and things in place. And I think we've followed those rules um, that have been put in place. And, and again, I think this um, will only hurt, and, and I hate to say this, but it's true, it would only hurt the inner city communities. Uh, with the stoppage of players because of if you're not vaccinated, um, if someone does happen to be um, test positive, you know, you're not vaccinated, that puts you in a 10 days isolation, whether you're uh, negative or not. Right. And um, as we know, through history and tradition, um, most of the inner city communities, you know, the vaccination there, we're kind of up in the air with it. Um, so that only puts you know, the, the major inner city schools in jeopardy with that rule. So that's another thing we have to, you know, battle with because, right, you stop it now, um, but if someone else tests positive again, that's oh, the majority of your team shut down again. Right, right. And, and I like, I think you guys both, both hit it per, rather perfectly. Um, I think that they should have, why, why, why was there a shutdown like, like, okay, if you're going to say Springfield Public Schools can't, like, why? Why wasn't there any sense to say, you know, why don't we just shut down as a whole? You know what I mean? So then to not, you know, that is in that 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 doesn't hinder development and and the work that that you guys um, put in, you know, to, to to teach the kids basketball and and all the consistency that that um, that comes with that. Well, and I think that it's hard. I think that I want to give. Not shut down. I don't know. Let's not use the word shut down. Mm -hmm. let's, let's use the word pause. And <laughs> I think that at some levels we got to give those people who, who decided to pause and right. give them some form of credit. Because at some point they they decided the health and safety of, of coaches and, and players and players' families is more important than the actual game, which when it is, which is it, regardless of how you look at it. Right. But only in Springfield. But, 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 <laughs> right, right, right. We're talking right. about Springfield. I'm, just, I'm in Springfield. Because other coaches' health doesn't matter. Mm. You know, the, but, no, we can only talk about Springfield. <laughs> That's very true. We can't talk about anybody else because we don't know what, what, what any other community is doing, right? So right. That's very true. We, so we can't talk about nobody else. Um, so I say this, and, and closing my thought is this I hope that as soon as the holidays are over, that we all can get back. Kids will all get back because I think all the, for the kids, they all that's the mental break they need from the crap that's going on, right? Agreed. I think that they we all need to get back. Um, there's a lot of kids that have milestones that need to be reached. There's coaches that have milestones that need to be reached, right. and I think it's, it's unfortunate if, if everyone doesn't get a chance to, to, to compete. Um, but let's keep in mind, let's just pump our brakes for a second, breathe, get through the holidays, and see what. I've already pumped my brakes. I've been on pause for about uh, two weeks now. So <laughs> <laughs> my brakes have been pumped. <laughs> We've been relaxing. Um, we, have a lot of Zoom, we have a lot of Zoom meetings, uh, a lot of text messages going out to kids, a lot of FaceTimes. Uh, you know, you just want to keep in touch with the kids and, and, you know, still let them know it's bigger than basketball. Listen, right? Everything we do is are, bigger than basketball. Kids are texting me right now. Yeah, right? I just, I'm looking <laughs> at my, like, they're texting me right now. What are you doing, coach? Uh, <laughs> you don't want to know what I'm doing. Man, man, man. Um, Coach Bird, your thoughts on the two horsemen and what they've been able to accomplish this season. And um, when can we expect uh, Dion Jr. to hit that uh, thousandth point? The two horsemen? Yes, the two horsemen. Oh Travis Jordan and Dion Bird they don't, Jr. They don't, they don't need any more nicknames. <laughs> so I, I have I have nicknames for them too that I probably can't say. <laughs> oh, crap. Um, I think that those two have been those two started started their development together started two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, they, they they had a period of time where where playing together wasn't easy. Um, they fought. We they fought. We intervened. Um, 
matter of fact, I'm sure Coach Avery had to intervene sometimes with, with, with Dion because <laughs> like, like, it wasn't pretty. Uh, but once they realized that they needed each other to be successful, mm -hmm. things got better. Um, now they are pretty good friends. Um, they're, they're, I think they're, they're really, really close now, which is good. Um, I say this, like people are always going to poo poo. My, my team, my kids, because we play at a small school. Right. Um, I believe that. I believe that. And coach, you could jump in and tell me I'm crazy. I believe. <laughs> I, I believe I have one of the better, one of the best backcourts in Western Mass. I don't care what. The Woo! I, I didn't say the best one. <laughs> okay. I said one of the better ones. Um, and 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 the responsibilities that they have in order for us to win games is greater than, than a lot of other backcourts. Um, so. We will only go as far as, as they take us. Most but, definitely. But, but they do have, we do have a pretty good supporting cast around them. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that the team is pretty much um, is well balanced. I would say as well balanced. What but, what what can you say about um, Rodney Mayfield Jr. and and how he's come on ever since that legendary that dunk a couple weeks ago? This been Rodney. RJ, uh -huh. been, um, we took our time with, with his development. Um, he's, he's been he's been on varsity for since a freshman, but we took our sweet time. Um, we didn't um, we didn't he didn't play any JV, which he probably should have. But but we thought that it'd be more it'd be better for him if we just kept him on varsity and, and slowly grind with him. Um, he started he was he started playing right before we hit the playoffs. Freshman, his freshman year, um, Rodney has been uh, yeah, yeah, he has steady improved every year, um, and I still think that wherever wherever he ends up going to college, and we believe that we may be able to announce some form of where he's going to college in the next two weeks. Um, wow, oh, that's gonna be big. And I think that he's gonna be a better college player than what he was as a high school player. Okay, Coach Rivera, Coach Rivera. Um, current coach of the SciTech Cybercats, Springfield Mass, with a convincing victory over Taconic, in which the Cats demonstrated that they can lock down a point, an opponent in the second half of the game. They won 67-58. Gotta respect good shooters like Andrew Mabry and Chris Gonzalez, but they need to knock down bigger, bigger shots. There's going to be bigger opportunities. There's going to be um, more times. Uh, that they're going to have to step it up and score more than just a couple baskets. Um, and the little bit that you, that has been showed with your team, Coach Rivera, what can you say about what they've done so far this season? Um, we haven't accomplished anything yet. Um, it's funny you read those two names, right? Uh, one's a sophomore, <laughs> one's his first year on varsity, right? So no one has yet to see the meat and potatoes of, of what we actually can do. Um, that game we were actually down four players played seven, I think we went seven deep that day, um, had a couple of guys come up because of um, injury um, and, and things of that nature. Um, they're going to be a key part of what we do, um, but um, once, Love it. if we can get back into the gym um, and, and, and get on the right page, um, I think we're one of the better teams in the city. Excuse me, I know we're one of the better teams in the city. Um, I, I know we're going to be able to compete with the best of them. It's just a matter of right now we're at a little of a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. um, but always keep a positive mindset. I said, well, we had a couple of guys banged up. This uh, pause actually allowed a couple of our guys to get healthy, um, get their minds right, um, and, and, and their bodies right, and things of that nature. Um, my biggest thing is make sure we stay on, on our academics um, and, and, and do what's necessary during this little pause that we had. Um, but that one game that we had, uh, again, it, wasn't the best game we played. I mean, we had 27 turnovers. Oof. Um, people wouldn't wouldn't notice that. Uh, we had 27 turnovers, and we still won the game by nine on the road. To tough I believe environment tough environment to a team I believe won. Uh, was it Western Master State Championship last year? They, two years ago. Two years ago. They, they won yeah. the states. They won the states two years ago. Yep. And um, one of their players was actually in the Super Seven. Um, they have one that went to um, Putnam Science Academy, right? Yes. Postgrad. Yeah, post <coughs> So, I mean, that was a really, really talented program. Um, the coach does a great job of getting them prepared. The coach does a lot of good things over there at Taconic. So, big shout-out to him. Um, 
more of us. We we just got to get on the court and see what we can do. Right, right. And you guys will get that that uh, first opportunity January third against Holyoke. Uh, that game has been postponed as the last I checked. So we will not uh, get a final answer until after uh, probably January third whether we continue to play or not. Awesome, awesome. Okay, well, we're supposed to play January. E either way, they're going to be, I, I assume they're going to be ready. Um, Coach Rivera, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, your roots as a player. Like, how how, how, how did um, how did you start? How did, how did you did come homework. about as far as playing basketball? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the intro to that. He, I, he did his homework. <laughs> really did his homework. Uh, as player? Yeah, as yeah. coach? As player? Yeah. Um, give me, give me, wait, we're, we're going to go back to, to, to when it started. We'll go back, uh, <laughs> way back. Um, originally, there's a very funny story. Okay. And people are going to, they can laugh with it and run with this now. Um, I used to play football. Um, oh. I was a wide receiver. I played for 5A way back when. I <laughs> the north or the south. Yeah, yeah. And um, I happened to be taking an end of the round. Okay. And... The, the little thing that guys are doing now where they're trying to jump over defenders, um, I tried it way back then. It was never a good idea then. Still not a good idea now. Um, happened to get flipped upside down, yep. land awkwardly, um, and then my mother came running out of the stands. That was it. Oh, that wow. was it for me. Um, at that point, I was like, all right, it, it's time to try something different when your mom is running out of the stands to see if you're okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was just all over the place. I mean, I was uh, playing at SBO, uh, Rick Five, uh, Dunbar, Family okay. Center, um, Holy Name at one point. Um, wherever I could play basketball, I was playing basketball. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where it started. Um, but I think the best thing that happened to me is uh, I was attending Side Tech, yep. which I currently coach at now. And, I wasn't the best of students. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I actually, I happened to be uh, <laughs> let go <laughs> at some point during that uh, year. <laughs> and we used to have this, uh, we used to have this really good winter league for guys who couldn't get their academics straight at Rebecca Johnson here okay. in Springfield, Mass. And it was very competitive. Um, and they barred me from that league. Oof. Um, which I think was the best thing, right? They gave me an option, they gave me a choice. Either academically you're gonna get it together or you're just not gonna play basketball. Right. And I uh, happened to catch a break where um, the community came together and uh, big shout out to Charles Rux. Um, he uh, talked to me and I was able to then attend Cathedral High School, which is now uh, Pope Francis, um, where I attended with, with Coach Williams and myself. and. Um, oh. I think from there it was it was a change. Uh, the way I had to carry myself, the way I uh, had to learn to be a role player, um, to embrace teammates, um, to embrace what we do as a culture. Um, I always tell this like Cathedral is like a family. And that's what it was. And it was my second family. Um, we ended up winning uh, Western Mass Championship uh, with Sean Neal great uh, cathedral player that year yes. um, and then we came back the next year we won uh, Western Mass again and then we ended up winning the state championship uh, myself, Coach Williams uh, Pat Martin, Derek Yvonne uh, Kyle, e uh, Kyle Harder, Teddy Eaton uh, Brandon Kelly, we, we had a pretty good a pretty good team that year um, and I sat my senior year out obviously I uh, didn't get my waiver okay. which you know traditionally you know, yeah. what you do in your past ultimately is going to come back and haunt you at some point. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, I was roofing with my stepfather. And first of all, big shout out to anybody who's a roofer. Ooh, yeah, yeah, anyone I tried that out for a does manual month. labor, any carpenter, <laughs> anyone who works with their hands and are on their feet 24 hours. Landscaper. <laughs> Landscaper. Big shout outs to you guys. Um, <laughs> this guy's the because I got a phone, I got a phone call from a coach, yeah, um, who uh, was like, "Hey, we want you to come out here." And before he could hang up the phone, I said, "Coach, I'll be there Saturday. See you." There. I didn't even worry about anything. I just wanted to get off that roof. <laughs> and so that's where, that's where my basketball life 
changed. I ended up going to junior college out of Mercy Hills, Northeast Pennsylvania. Nice. Um, had an opportunity to play at Western New Mexico, um, so. which didn't go too well for me. <laughs> Still had some immaturities there. Uh, shout out to Coach Coleman if you ever see this. <laughs> uh, coach Mike Mannix from Mobile Hair Munson was actually my assistant coach. Awesome. Um, so uh, learned a lot of things out there from Mike. Um, a, how to run when I get in trouble because he always used to make <laughs> sure that I did my running. Uh, and then I finished up uh, finally uh, my playing career at uh, MCLA Mass College of Liberal Arts out of North Adams. Uh, nice. Up in Mass, the Berkshires. Up in the Berkshires. Um, <laughs> underneath uh, Jamie Morrison who was – uh, new coach coming in, and I was a new player. And, yeah, awesome. So, oh, I, I another one I want to know. Um, at what point did you? I, I guess did you kind of like figure that coaching was going to be for you, and that's that was something that you were you were going to do. I think the summer I came home. Summer I came home from junior college. I was asked to coach. Okay. Um, wasn't great. Um, I was coaching a summer team for Cathedral and I knew a little bit and we actually won. I won a lot of games. Uh, I think that year we lost in the championship um, to Holyoke High School. Um, and at that point my mentor um, most of my mentors were you know, Gene Engelston, um, Tony Bergeron, Ooh, uh, you know, you had Eddie Anderson, you had Charles Rocks. You know, you, you had a, a, a good group of, of, of mentors who coached basketball. And I wanted to identify with with helping those who helped me. So they always used to tell me pay it forward. And that was my way of paying it forward. Yeah. Um, and then I happened to get involved in uh, five-star basketball camp. Ooh, here we go. This is... Um, <laughs> where... The dynamics in it, in <laughs> it prepared you. It, was a different life, bro. it prepared you if you wanted to be a coach at any point of level. I mean, you were going from eight a.m. to sometimes twelve o'clock at night. <laughs> oh. All right, um, three days a week. Right? right, you get like a couple of days off, and you're right back at it. Right, and this is all during the summer. So, no, um, no. And not knowing if it <laughs> oh, that was the best part. I don't know if you're getting hit it then, but it came. It, it always came. It always came. It always came. No question. It always clears. No question about that. Um, but yeah, so that's where it was. And once, um, once you compete, that competitive never, you know, that competition never leaves your body. Never. Um, okay. With anything you do, right? Like I'm like, I tie my shoe better than you. Right, right, right. right. I'll, I'll, I'll brush out. Right. Yeah. I brush my teeth faster. Yeah. Right? Whatever the case may be, right? It's always some form of competitive. And right. then you happen to run into, you know, Coach Bird, and who, who was coming in to the family, new at the time. Okay. Uh, we had Coach R. Thomas. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we just had a, we had a group of, of, of personalities that, man, if you, had to, if you were a fly on that room, <laughs> the knowledge that yep. came out of those rooms um, was unbelievable. So that's what was ultimately it's like, all right, this is what you want to do. This is how you're going to accomplish that. Awesome, awesome. Now, you know, as, as you had just hinted to with, this, with, the, um, with all those extra basketball competitions, you and Coach Bird, uh, Pats, ended up crossing. Can you guys, can you guys reiterate some, some stories, something? Yeah, can, can you drop that. some gems for us, please, oh, on 413 Sports Talk? Was, um, how many years did we do 5-7? Oh, my God. Five or six. It felt like my whole life. Right. <laughs> so it got to the point where... Me coming in, mm -hmm. me coming in, and these guys already being there. You feel like now you say you got to compete. I felt like I had to win, and I had to win loud to get my to get my get myself across. So my main target was a coach. If he hope he's watching, it's Art Thomas. Art Thomas. Okay. Art Thomas was was my main target. There were times in, in lunch, I would stand up on the table and yell. I don't know if I'm going to win a game this week, but I'm not losing to Art Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> that was like that for every camp for as long as we worked. Um, and then it got to the point where it was almost every every camp, me and Coach Rivera was competing for, for the camp championships. And, and I think it's because 
I think we just took the draft a lot more seriously than everyone else did. Mm -hmm. um, because neither one of us won not. Then it got to the point where we started saying, I'm not trying to win this week because I don't want to referee games. That's <laughs> 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 your feet. Eight to, yeah, I don't want to referee games, though. I'm, eight I'm, to 12 uh, hours. It takes you to. But um, <laughs> it was fun. Um, I have to admit, I've never um, coached girls basketball. Okay. Um, that was a classic championship game. I never coached. Classic championship <laughs> game. Ever. I, and it's not because I don't love girls basketball. I think um, I always tell my players. He was told that he can't coach the girls game. <laughs> he was told he can't come to camp. But, but that's it. They, uh, so I uh, always tell my kids and I always tell them, I said, if, if you guys want to see the way basketball should be played, right. watch women basketball. <laughs> that, that's the way the game's supposed to be played. And, and there's no knock on all these. I mean, we have a bunch, and we have young ladies dunking now and stuff like right. that. Right. Um, we have a lot of athleticism um, at the next levels. Mm -hmm. um, but the the way in which they're precise with how they screen, how they roll, how they run their sets. Their fundamentals um, are so much Their better. fundamentals are so much smoother, more Smoother, I'd say. Um, than, 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 than guys' basketball. No that's question because they have, to, they have to rely on their fundamentals. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Like even 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 the best female players that, that are super athletic, right? They don't. Their fundamentals come before the athletic right. Right, that comes. So it makes it even easier for them. And right, and right. you got to realize, like, if you get an athletic team, you're maybe going to have two or three um, who are athletic, more athletic than others. Mm -hmm. um, when you come to our side, and you got about five to six to seven guys who are athletics, right. um, excuse me, who are athletic that you have to navigate that through. Right, um, with them, they, they're very precise. The precision, the accuracy, and how they screen, how they roll, um, how their movements. Um, I'm a very big, huge fan of, 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 of girls basketball. You know, I have oh, not yeah. coached it, and we can't say that. I cannot say that during the road that if something was to to, to open up at a higher level, that I may, yeah. um, you know, may take that route just. <laughs> so, right, you never want to say no to anything. Right. Well, right. I started out as a girls' coach. Yes. Really? Oh, oh please, I, please I, elaborate I on that, coach. I, 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 I was with um, my first girls' job was with um, with, with Wilshire Athletics. Wilshire Athletics was, was my first girls' coach gig. Um, that was a hot mess. <laughs> it was a hot mess. Oh God. And then um, Scott Walker, at the time, was. Uh, Shout out to Scott Walker. He was running the for Lady Ballers, and he came and grabbed me out the gym, and I, and I became a Lady Ballers coach. That coaching staff was serious. It was me, Joe Page, James G. James G, yep. And, Shout out to him. Uh, Jesus Sanchez. Oh, <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Sanchez, too. Senior. <laughs> Senior. So we went on a run of just winning basketball games. That was just ridiculous. But, um, but, but coach is not trying to tell a story, bro. So you're, 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 you're going to let him go. Just back to the story. Yes, back yes, yes. Here we go. Here we um, go. <laughs> I had one of the uh, better players at the time. I believe she was a freshman. Uh, Big shout out to Rebecca Ripley. Uh, she yep. played at uh, Miami. University of Miami, then transferred to, uh, I want to say, Central Florida, UCF. Yep, yep, uh, yep. She's currently, I think she's currently doing her thing now. Um, she was a freshman at the time. Um, she was tough. Tough, very tough. I mean, if you could take her to the, to the streets – and, a, and she'll be able to ball with the guys at the park. That's how tough she was as a Ooh. freshman. All right. um, so I've never, uh, at this point, I've never coached girls basketball. I don't know why, I don't know why you talk about he never. This coach, man, stop talking. No, <laughs> I never coached before, and I, I didn't understand it. All right, that was a very opening thing. So what happened was, uh, by the way, Coach Bird did have an illegal player. We're not going to talk about Ooh. that. We're not going to talk about Recruit that. Recruit violations. We're not going to talk about that. She <laughs> did have an illegal player at the time. Excuse me. I didn't do the registration. I'm just saying, at the time, there was an illegal player. I didn't do the registration. She was at camp. She was at camp. <laughs> hey, they just fall. Hey, they fuck it. Fall. So, uh, needless to say, for the first three quarters, I, I took Coach Bird out to the, you know, to the shed and, you know, handle business. We're thinking this is a walk away. We're like, all right. We got, we got this. We're up 27 at this point. All right? We're up 27 at this point. I'm like, we can go on cruise control. All right. All right. Um, I happened to not be able to play one of my better players. 
uh, Hannah, who mm-hmm. could handle the pressure, um, <laughs> who could handle the pressure, and um, she was out. And Coach Bird, run and jump, run and jump, ran and jump, everyone um, <laughs> denied denied Rebecca, run and jumped everyone, and needless to say, they made it all the way back. Oh, <laughs> they took the lead. <laughs> They're up. <laughs> it's about eight seconds left. No, excuse me, about three seconds left at this point. Okay. Um, so I run a play that I normally always call where uh, the inbounder always gets an opportunity to shoot the last three. Oh, um, okay. My inbounder happened to be Rebecca Ripley. Coach didn't know this play was going to happen. It was supposed to be a diversion on the entire side. And instead of reversing the ball to the right where the diversion is, yep. uh, the inbounder steps back in because normally um, the girls don't pay attention to the, the girls passing the ball. So I was, okay, okay. I saw it late. He saw it late. It's too late. It's too late when I saw it. Because we didn't get a good here, shot off. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> Happened to go in, come out. We ended up losing the game. Ooh, those um, are painful toilet bowls. To this day, me and me and I, I'm, I'm looking for the picture right now. I can't find it. We actually have a picture uh, <laughs> of me holding the medal like he's this. He's holding the medal like this yeah. over <laughs> my head. Um, so, needless to say, I'm on one in, in, in camps. No, no, no. We, 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 had a, we had a few championship games. Yeah, but for the girls, just yeah, that, that was only one. one but yeah, so we had a few. And then we had a couple of uh, battles on the boys' side. Um, I, think you're, I think you're up 3-2. Yes, I am for the record, but I, I, I we want to go to the, to the, to the, uh, the officials on this one. He did have an illegal player. Ooh. Uh, she did happen to be a really good college player. <laughs> At the time, <laughs> At the time. She, 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 she was going into her freshman year in college. She had she did, at that time she did, she did not play one second in college basketball. She was six four. She was. Why? Because she was 6'4". <laughs> she, 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 she was bigger than that. She, she, was, probably, right. she, was, probably, she was probably bigger than that. She's taller than me. <laughs> she fucking she's taller than me. And she can play. Like, let's, not, let's not get this confused. Let's not lose the fact that she was 6'4". Right, right. She can play. Uh-huh. She was 6'4 and could play. Listen, <laughs> let me tell you real quick the funniest story that we can tell you about a five-star basketball game. Gotcha. Me and this guy is in the middle of a game, semifinal game. Mm-hmm. The, the score is going back and forth, back. We are coaching like we are coaching for real now, right? Yeah. <laughs> no one wants to lose. No, no one wants to lose this. But then in the back of your mind, like, I'm okay if I lose because that means I don't have to ref. Right. Right? Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, refing sucks, huh? So, I, in the back of my mind, I'm hearing all during this game, don't draft the Spaniards. Don't draft it because we had a bunch of kids from Spain. Oh. And, I, and, I'm hearing, it, and I'm hearing it, don't draft the Spaniards. Like, my, this is semifinal game, don't draft the Spaniards. Uh-huh. The game is going on and on, on and on. The next thing you know, I, I said the magic word. I don't know what that magic word was. Pass the ball. The, the, <laughs> yo, the kid in the inbound, the kid's inbound with the ball. Yep. He looked at me and threw it back out of bounds. Oh, and, wow. And all wow. the fans left the court. What an idiot. No, no, no. They all left the court. They quit. Yo. Meanwhile, <laughs> they, no, they quit, bro. They quit and went to go lay down. Meanwhile, I have a group of Spaniards, uh-huh. and we're actually running plays in Spanish. Oh, okay. It's awesome. So I happen to get the Spaniards who wanted to play. <laughs> right? I told them not to draft them. Uh, they didn't listen to me. I was so ecstatic when they did draft them because I was like, this is about to go downhill. He said, right. he said, this coach is black like my chin glasses. What? At that point, oh, man. the lead it was over. It was I, over. The game was done. I had I had no more I had, had no, no more players. Because no. they bro, man. listen, they walked off the court and went to lay down. It said I'm not playing. I'm not playing. <laughs> Needless to say I get into the championship. I end up winning the championship that year. Ooh. Um, yeah, there was a couple of good ones. Uh there was one where I had the worst team. Going into the playoffs, I was seated eight. Who'd you meet? Mr. Thomas. Art Thomas. Oh, <laughs> okay, Thomas. okay. Art Thomas. Damn, Coach um, Thomas. There was a, a challenge. Uh, at this time, my daughter may have been, what, uh, six or seven. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. She was so annoying. She was so annoying. <laughs> kids, kids are so oh, annoying. I had her do the. Uh, <laughs> my daughter at that age was a, was the, a uh, hellion. 
<laughs> the minions all, all, all day long. I had to do that all day long to coach Bert just to throw him off. <laughs> so I was using the cage, right? I was with my daughter to throw this off. So she did an awesome job of being annoying. Like, yeah. we went home and she had like a five star meal. Let me tell you. About awesome. Uh, when I turn around, she's behind me. Me, me. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> threw him off of his game. He right. ends up losing to Art Thomas, one of his nemesis. The only time I've ever lost. Him. <laughs> um, I then turn around and I'm the eighth seed playing the number one seed. Ooh, so um, little George Mason. He thought he, had, thought he had it locked in the bag, but he had one kid. It was really good, Scooter. That was his name. That was a kid from Canada. Canada. His name was Scooter. So what I did was is I ran a pick and roll with Scooter again and made Scooter switch to the other guy, and my best player had a. A lesser player defending him, Damn. and he just went to work. Get to work. Yep. <laughs> I want name drop for you real quick. Ready? Yeah. How good? I got sent home because I got sick. But how good my team would have been with Gary Payton Jr. Oh, it would have been crazy. Ooh, Gary Payton Jr. though? It would have been crazy. Damn. Listen, Gary Payton Jr. was on my team. It would have been crazy. That I drafted in the second round. What did I tell you? How good the talent level at that The talent camp, up there was just hands down, you just... The talent we saw in those camps was just ridiculous. Uh-huh. Um, I had an opportunity to play against PlayStation. Uh, did for the N1. Um, uh, who else was there? Um, there was a lot of talent. Uh, Keenan from Missouri was there. There was a lot of talent there. A lot of talent, there. Of talent. Lot of talent we, we saw. Like, um, we can, like, enough. The, the best thing about, like, our stuff is, right, no one can, we can't deny this. Like between the five star, type, our five star years and the Commonwealth years, we have seen and coached against some of the best talent. There's there's players that was first round draft picks that we coached against in high school. Like I was telling the kids a couple of nights ago, Bruce Brown played at, at, at Vermont Academy. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell was up at Brewster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So these are all, these are people. These are the young men who we had a chance to to see firsthand. Try to come up with some help. Try to come up and help our kids somehow to, to beat them. What about that kid? Um, oh man, ha- Hassan. He's French. French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played. He played. He played um, for Central. Was, and now, whoa, 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 that's a soccer. That's, that's a one. That's Ward. A Ward. 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 Okay. Okay. I'll, so he's uh, at VCU. He's at VCU. Yeah. Yep. Hassan French was our kid at Commonwealth that played at um, St. Louis. St. Louis, and now he's played overseas. Oh. Very humble. Very, very humble young man. Very respectful. Um, he was more business like than anything. Um, took his approach was business like everything he did. So, so big yeah. shout out to us. So check this out. Yep. So we're, uh, so we're just gonna cut you off for a second. Right? Okay, okay, go go right ahead. This is this was the this was the gold I was waiting for anyway. Here's, here's the best one. Uh huh. Now I'm at Bay State. Shocks at Renaissance. Yep. Okay. I did want to hear about let's, about let's, your let's, time let's, at Renaissance. Let's have a backstory first. Leon <laughs> Junior was at Renaissance. Yep. Um, I was perfectly okay with my son going, going to play for him. Um, academically, it's fair to say it didn't work out for him. Where yeah. he, we had Renaissance, so we, we had talks from the beginning. If this doesn't, because we knew it, it may be different, because because the Renaissance way of doing things, it's hard to come in there and do it. Because if you didn't start from sixth grade, um, and big shout out to to, to Renaissance, um, the way that they do things. If you didn't start out from sixth grade um, and finish through. Right, with the academic rigor and things of that nature. It's hard. Um, it's very difficult to come in your first year and be successful. Right. Um, so, but, but we talked about it. So, so, so we decided let's, let's move him, right? Yeah. So now, let's fast forward to two years of that. The next year, boom, on the schedule. Bay State versus Renaissance. <laughs> and, I, and I said to myself was, shit. I didn't mind the game, but I, I did everything in my power to move that game here. Mm. I tried. He wasn't falling for the trap. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't falling for the trap. Why now, would you play someone at their home court when they've been practicing all year? <laughs> right. 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 Coach, right. Coach, you get coach, ready to light you guys up. Coach. Hey, your facility too small. You know, we we travel. We need big. We need. We need he said, I don't care. <laughs> you and your principal come in here. She can't come in. <laughs> she can't come in because she only allowed a certain amount of Bay State fans. This is <laughs> so 
Hey, yeah, you got people, folks scalping tickets and so, shit. So, <laughs> mind you, we kind of know each other. Like, we kind of know each other like the back of each other's hand. Like, mm. we, I, there was nothing that he, I won't, I, that's a lie. I was going to say there was nothing that you didn't do that didn't surprise me. There was one thing you did that sort of had me thrown off completely for a quarter and a half. Um, you moved Dejan Eddie to the block. To the block. <laughs> yep. Which we 1,000% expected for him to be your primary ball handler. Because I won't say who we, who I, I will tell you who I wanted to be the ball handler because I think that's disrespectful. Because we talked about this. There was one player that we wanted to be their ball handler. Because mm-hmm. we thought for sure, if he's the ball handler, we're gonna punk him. Yep, cookies all day. No, 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 not cookies. <laughs> we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not taking them all. Mm-hmm. But we're gonna punk him into doing what, what we want him to do. Mm-hmm. Right mm-hmm. now, and I think Coach Rivera said his his main worry was, don't let Dion hit his first shot. Yeah, I mean a game like that, you, it's always emotion, mm-hmm. right? And, and, and you learn to use children's emotions against them, right? You right. know, it's a high-energy game. It's a game where you want to play well. Um, so typically, on, on a natural day, your, your emotions are a little bit higher anyway, than they normally are. But this one, it was even... It was, it was through the roof. There was social media talk, uh, Snapchat going on. <laughs> uh, I happened to get uh, some of the Snapchat stuff. And I use <laughs> and I do this I do this for every game. We did the same. We use it as bolt and board material. I made up stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. I made up stuff. Listen. So, <coughs> for the record, guys, now you actually know. <laughs> I made up stuff. I made up stuff. It did not come from me. <laughs> so, so, the game starts. Dion gets a clean look, which he didn't want to happen at all. He gets a clean look. When I tell you the ball was 99% in the rim, and somehow it popped out. Ooh, that hurts. And then, <laughs> and then let's say, say he was non-existent the rest of the day. He he Z- picked up three three fouls in the first quarter. Now he sat. Um, and the, that team was more of a that my that team the idea was more of a pressure package type team. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and with him being out, we couldn't get into everything that we wanted to do. But uh, make a long story short was it was a great night of basketball. He ended up winning, so he's he's one to know in this in this environment too. <laughs> so um know what but know what the best thing was? After the game, we went up to dinner. Awesome. awesome. That was the best part of it. Because um but that game grew we grew up after that game. Yes. We okay. didn't go to the game after that. Yeah. After the game <clears throat> as as adults, as as coaches. As parents, as parents, as as teams, yeah. Mm-hmm. My my team grew up a little bit, and I think yours went back a little bit because I think they feel like, oh, we made it now. And I remember, I remember during our scrimmage but right before the playoffs started, you had a hard time getting their attention again. Yeah, you were like, like my team came in during the scrimmage, like we scrimmaged each other, getting ready for the playoffs. Yep. Mm-hmm. My team came in like, oh no, this is a real game. Right, and our guys, you know, they went through the motions, and and it showed ultimately the next game. But uh, shout out to L.J. Hicks, uh, <laughs> kid played a great game. I, I was telling Coach Bird, um, there was a one point. I mean, I think we may have been up five. Yeah. Uh, in the fourth quarter. Got you out. Um, no, I was on one. I was uh, one knee, and I'm coaching as I normally do, and uh, me and a young man happened to lock eyes. It's kind of <laughs> weird. <laughs> he kind of look at me. I kind of look at him. Uh, and it was about 3.53 left in the game, and I knew right then and their game was over. Yeah. <laughs> the young man had a look in his eyes that yeah. said, Coach, I am a senior. Tonight is not my last game. <laughs> and that young kid went on a, a run that yeah, he, in the last three minutes, he 53 just, seconds, he just, just, he just was on another level. And kudos to him. And I went, went back and I told my guys, and I said, you know, this young man's going to play at the next level. Didn't he end up going to Putnam Science? He went to Putnam as a, Science as a, as a postgrad as well. Um, so, you know, those are the talents you're dealing with. Um, my guys, obviously, they were, they were a little bit down. Um, I think the best part of that game, though, was uh, we uh, Coach Burton gets ready to score. They score a basket, and he gets ready to call a call. And I know he's getting <laughs> ready to call the call. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, 
because I know he's getting ready to jump into his beam of defense. So <laughs> no, no, sure. no, you're about to get havoc. He was about to get havoc, and as soon as he <laughs> said it, I knew it was coming, and I said, you know what, time out. We're not going to allow this to happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, that was his, I think, the only opportunity to get to into get that. Into it. Get into that havoc. Because um, we, we, we had cut it down to two. Yep. And um, once I called that timeout and, and I prepared him for it, I think we got an and one from Dejan Eddy on the other end. You, you want another 10 nothing run? Yeah. But, check, but check this out. Ready? Mm-hmm. I know 10 nothing run. Yeah. It's maybe six minutes left in the game. I do this. I'm sick of looking at y'all. You, y'all are done for the night. Started fight. Everybody off. I'm done. I, and I'm yelling. I quit. You win. I, so, I put the bench in. So I look at Shaka like this. I look at him and he goes like this to me. He goes, I'm not falling for that. You're not quitting. Because <laughs> I know what I wanted him to do, right? Yeah. Empty his bench too. Mm-hmm. Let's go bench against the bench. <laughs> bench against the bench. <laughs> it wasn't happening. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Those five guys were going to ride that game <laughs> until about 30 seconds left in the game. Right. Listen, so I tried it, right? And then I look at him I go, Never mind. You guys go back. <laughs> I, I tried. I, we were trying everything possible. I just couldn't. Like the, the Dejan Eddie factor in the post, we was I was not prepared for. It. Uh, just something different. Little different little wrinkle. Because <laughs> um, we had a bunch of wrinkles, but but I think the one thing that you guys wasn't prepared for was how good Lolo was. Mm. Yeah. And then Travis went wild. Yeah. Uh, then we had a game plan, right? And then you go in, you you understand or you establish, okay, well, we're going to let this young man do what he needs to do, right? He, there's a reason why he's super seven, right? The kid can play. If he was at a bigger school, he still can play at one of the biggest schools in the city. It's just the kid's talented. Right. Um, you allow him, our game plan was let him get his, and now you have to do your job of controlling everyone else around him. Don't let, don't let Deion get his 12? Yeah, don't let him get So whatever their average was, our job was to hold them under their average. And, and that's what the game plan was going in. And I think it was uh, a little different um, when Coach saw that I went back into a 2-3 zone. It's traditionally something that we, we don't do, but with that, yeah. group, <laughs> that length. Uh, and I was like, you know what, let's go a little different. Go, you, you definitely could have gotten away with it. Deion's on the bench. Yeah. Deion's on the bench. Like, like, and so that I, was, I don't think anyone, he, he's like, I'm not worried about anyone shooting right now. If they did shot, if they did shoot, we was like, okay, let's, let's just rebound. We're a little bit taller. Yeah, I had at that point. Um, so, yeah. Awesome, man. I, I, um, this, if you guys got, got anything else? I mean, I think that, you know. To wrap it up? It's funny, like, like, like it's hard to, like, he doesn't believe, every once in a while he texts me, like, are you sure? And I know what that means. Yeah, I'm sure. This is it for me. This is it for me. This is it? That's, this come is on, it. coach, this man. And I don't know what anyone else does, and I don't care what anyone oh. else does, right? But the, the, the work and preparation that I have to go through to get to get um, ready for games and practices yep. is a lot. Um, I like where he's going with this one. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like, yep. Shaka said something to me over the summer, and I, and I, and I, and I had to text him back and say, you're right. Um, I think that who I think is going to take over for me, I think that I think they're going to do a, a great job when I'm going. Um, my teams play with a certain type of defense intensity that coach said, when you leave, there's no way your kids are playing with that same intensity. And um, I'm like, nah, they'll be fine. And then we, we watched, we watched them play Sabbath for some of them. <coughs> and, um, and I, that night I texted them like, I'm not sure if they can play at that same intensity. Like, the intensity that they played in that night during the Summer League game. What did they go, undefeated during the whole Summer League? No, we lost, we lost three times. We lost to that very good Grammy Connecticut team. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were nasty. That They are the team that was in green. And we lost to, um, <laughs> we lost to um, Northampton. And I don't think people understand how great of a coach Coach Hart is out of Northampton. That man coached a coach basketball team. You talk yeah. about an interview. Try to get that because the knowledge that man has is amazing. Um, so yeah, I just think that it's a perfect time. Like when I when I started at Bay State, mm-hmm. I was I was only supposed to be there for one year. 
remember that, remember that conversation. I'm out. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Here, here we are six years later. Um, and the work that me and my staff, the school, the stuff my wife have to put up with, um, it's just time, bro. It's just time. It's time? But, well, honestly, Coach Bird, you can't go anywhere without us talking about that uh, 89 and 34 record. 11 more. 11 more. 11 more. We, we, we're going to see it happen this year? should if we play but again um, that's funny right coaches don't even reach 100 wins I don't reach I don't reach 100 wins without without the sport the school my staff I mean how lucky am I I mean I, I pretty much had the same staff since since I started um, the kids bought it uh, the kids bought it everyone's bought it so that's nothing um, I, I, I can't get that without everybody else being involved, bro. You know, it's a lot. Like, even, like, Shaka wasn't even with me, but I can't, we can't even tell you the phone calls that we made after games and, and trying to figure stuff out. And Shaka, like, even this guy, this poor guy, he gets phone calls from, uh, from opposing coaches. <laughs> like, like, right? <laughs> like, coach, what's Bay State run? You know? He always said the same thing. When the bus get, when the bus pulls up, you're getting pressed. Right. Damn, damn, right off the gate? Right off the right gate? Off the gate? <laughs> Fuck, man. It's been a long, it's been a heck of a run. It's been a heck of a run. Yes, yes. Like, you don't understand. Like, <laughs> those years at Commonwealth, one year is equivalent to three, <laughs> almost, because the grind was different. Yeah. You know, you're talking about 10, ten camps a summer for six years. We're not talking about the clinics and camps that, that, that we ran separately. Hmm. I'm not, you're not, but I don't, I, people can argue this all you want. I don't think that no one, I won't say no one, Spring, our youth team was hardly one of the best youth team Springs was ever seen. Oh, hands down. Hmm. Like, you're talking about Dion, Chandler, Wilson Jr., Joe Paul, uh, Jason Green, Jason Green, Green yeah. Dejon Eddy. Uh, I'm trying to think of the rest. A whole I'm, whole shit ton I'm, of weapons right about there. Josiah, I mean uh, DJ, DJ, DJ Daniels, um, Ray Carter Jr. Those yeah. guys all played together. That, that's who we mm-hmm. coach with. Like, Shout out to Ray J, like, <laughs> the family right there. Like, <laughs> the work that we put in with them and their dads. Bro, oh, listen. It's time for me. Uh, God bless you all. We'll keep doing it. The beach is calling my name. You heard it. You heard it first. As you guys know, Coach Bird is on his farewell tour. I'm trying to convince him to come back because honestly, what's it going to be if the Bay State Bulls and not to not to not to go on another big tangent or whatever? What's it going to be if the Bay State Bulls get to that state championship and lose? That final game. What's what? 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 What you gonna do? You're gonna you're gonna leave? Yeah. On that note? Yeah. Uh, I, I do. Nah, nah. I can 150 percent tell you he's he's, he's, gone. he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> Damn, man. You talk about again. You talk about you're talking about almost a complete rebuild again, right? Yep. Like, and I lose seven seniors. And the energy it takes, and, and I and I don't think people understand. That. Time it takes away from your own children to mm. other children. Um, mm, the time yeah. that it takes you out of your own home setting. Um, the, the the late nights, uh, the unhealthy eating because you're practicing till nine. Or because you're the stress, you want to eat whatever's in your right. Or oh, the stress of the game coming mm-hmm. from. Or the bottles of liquor. <laughs> and, I, and, I, yeah. and I always tell, I always tell people. Um, a coach tell you this. I, I couldn't tell you how many wins I have. I, I don't I don't know. Nope. I've always been a coach who, who I don't care. <laughs> I always say, here is what I always say. Um, you're, but, but you're when judging me, judge me on how many kids go to college. Go to college. Yep. So if you ask me what my record is, I would say seven. Because at some point, seven of the individuals who I've come across from my time coaching has at some point registered 
an inter uh, institution of higher learning. That's it. Um, now, do they there. stay? That's not, that's not your I can't control that. What I can <laughs> right, control right, right. is getting you a platform to where you can go. Um, and, and, you know, if you want to continue on playing basketball, that option's there. Um, one of my favorite basketball players is um, Isaiah McCaskill. Okay. Um, and we have this funny relationship, and he, he's hilarious. Um, but he went on to go play soccer. <laughs> Right? And he's a stud in soccer, right? no question about it. Right. Right. Um, so that's the things you, you identify with. And I tell every parent, don't. Winning's going to come. Mm-hmm. Right. There's a cycle that happens every four years that a certain program in the city is always going to be good. Right. In right. Four years, you're going to get players. You're going to compete. You're going to win. Um, Western Mass are important for the children. Um, state championships are important for the children. Um, but I think as, as, as a head coach, what's more important to me is how many uh, young minority men I can place in, a, in, in an institution of, of higher learning mm-hmm. to where they can then uh, have choices uh, to decide what they want to do with their future. That, that, that uh, so I, like, I honestly can tell you, I didn't even know last year I won 16 games. <laughs> and I didn't even know. <laughs> it's just, I, he was I, just I, going I, through the motions. Yeah, I, was like, hey, I was like, all right, well, we're in the playoffs. I tell you this much, he's chasing 100 too. <laughs> I know. Hey, I know. Hey, I know. When I get to 100, if I if I coach long enough to get Bro, to 100, he's uh, there. That's a blessing. He's there. He's there. Um, he's, he's, listen, he may get it this year, but well, but him and I were talking about that off Gary. But I know I know how many he has. <laughs> coach Ford does. I don't. So <laughs> I, I know because Tommy told me. You know, he kept track of all, all, all of our stats. Ooh. So I again, I'm the one who doesn't. <laughs> right. I, you know I. They'll, they'll have it. They'll tell me. And when that time comes, I think the most memorable one is the first one you win. Yep. Like the first varsity game you win. Um, I still have that basketball. It's, in, it's signed by all the players. I was actually a Christmas gift um, from my other half. So thank you I for was, that. I was hating. Oh, shit. Um, Coach Bird then. <laughs> I was hating. Because <laughs> my wife didn't give me anything. He asked where was his and to his wife. And that was a funny conversation. <laughs> that was a funny conversation. <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, winning is great, mm. and, and I always say, it, and, and coach is going to reach his hundred, and I'll be there hopefully um, to celebrate that with him. Sure, that's a lie. But on another note, I told you RJ, so we should have something to RJ done in the next couple weeks. Yep. Um, I believe Deanna Travis will be done by the end of January. That's always something good, right? They'll mm. be done by the end of January. Um, then the other ones, the other kids, they should be done in February. So it looks like we should have them all done before the end of the season. The goal is to have them all done before senior night. Um, and my goal is just to get back on the court so we can actually have some basketball. Have some basketball. Right, right, right. So we can put them where they need to be placed. Yes, sir. Um, 413 Sports Talk would like to thank these two legendary coaches right here, Stop Coach that. Rivera, Coach Bird. Wait, I thought you said you had a question to ask me because you looked at me I got something to ask you. But don't if it's crazy, don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, well, we'll talk about that. No, no, because I know what you're gonna ask me. It's not happening. What? Come on. Listen, listen, listen. I just, I just want to say, my sources came to me yesterday, interrupted me during football, that that this um, that this gentleman might be um, interested in taking a certain um, high school uh, uh, basketball uh, job somewhere else um, next year. I don't know what the. I don't know if there's any truth to it or or whatever, but. This is um something something I, I heard from a bunch of different people yesterday. Their sources must be, must so, be drinking. So you 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 you're not going to there's no there's no, no there's no no there's, chance. There is absolutely no chance on God's green beautiful earth. Okay. <laughs> I have we we have a one way ticket that's leaving on July first. Ooh. <laughs> even, you see, he's not even staying for my birthday. He, he can't stay another three weeks on the 25th. And then. Does that mean I'll drink the water some more and I might want to stay? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, Thank you guys for showing up for Three Sports Talk. Appreciate it. Coach Shaco Rivera, Side Tech Cybercats, I appreciate you and your Elite time. Nutrition. Most definitely. Shout out to Elite Nutrition. Um, yeah, man, that lit tea was amazing. Like, first sip, and I was like, oh, let's go, let's go. Um, definitely hit up Elite Nutrition for those uh, those teas and start to think about getting rid of coffee, too, like they were trying to convince me. But I'm, I, without coffee, there is no life. 
<laughs> Odyssey. Um, this is episode 226 of 4 and 3 Sports Talk. Um, we will be back with another episode tomorrow. And um, thank you, gentlemen, for coming to the show. Thank you for having us. Most definitely. Have a good afternoon, everyone. See you later.